Christ as Savior, and there's sin that's in the way of your relationship, this is old-fashioned, uh, basic preaching, but you need to do something about it. You really do. You need to say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to dabble with this. I'm not going to just kind of go through the motions. I might have even confused a few people. Somebody might even think that everything's fine, but I know that everything is not fine. I will even tell you this, that when I'm preaching a message like this, especially on a Sunday night, I often have a, that there's often that concern that some of the ones who maybe aren't here are the ones that need to be hearing this message. Amen? And I can tell you that it is true. Not only will... Uh, sin keep you away from the book, the Bible. Right. Because we know that the Bible, the book, will keep you away from sin. But sin will keep you out of the house of the Lord. That's right. And sin will keep you, will, will cause you to dial back. And you'll justify it. You'll come up with reasons for why this is what's happening. But the truth is, and I know this isn't trendy to say, it's nothing but sin. It truly is. You know, uh, the devil keeps on coming along and saying, you know, there's this going on and that going on and all kinds of other things that you could be doing. The last thing you need to do is, is to show up on a Sunday night at a Baptist church. I mean, for crying out loud, there's a whole lot of churches now that don't even have a Sunday night service. Right. And you sure don't need to be so over the top about things. But then, you know, every time you turn around, you find out that anyone who has who has dialed back on focusing on the Lord, on serving the Lord, they're not better off for it. I've never seen anyone go in a direction where they find themselves uh, moving away from having a, uh, a, a real focus and a heart for serving the Lord uh, to doing better. It just doesn't work that way. So the question that we pose is this, are we hiding from God in our failure to repent of sin? Before we get any farther tonight, I can tell you this. If there's ever a time when the church, and you are the church, I am the church, you are the church. If there has ever been a time when real repentance is needed, it's now. Amen. You know, we, uh, we're watching television and we're looking at some of the things that are going on in the world. And we think it's all about what's wrong with the world. Folks, it's not the world. That we ought to be concerned about. It's born again Christians who are buying the lie, who are sliding slipperily down that slope and, and not getting it. So, first and foremost, a very, very convenient way to hide from God is, is to just not repent of sin. And you can even go through the motions and know that your heart's not right. Secondly, secondly, are we hiding from God in our personal pursuit of knowledge? Now, this is a really good one. Are we hiding from God in our personal pursuit of knowledge? Many are not. There, well, let me just say this. First of all, there are many who have not trusted God, who have not trusted the Lord, who are not saved, because they, they say that they don't fully understand uh, the message. We don't get Christianity. As a matter of fact, it, I, I'm still amazed at how it's interesting, but uh, the media still doesn't get Christianity. The media still doesn't understand the message of Christ. They are, or they do, and they refuse to really uh, come on board and, and be willing to tell the truth. You see, there are many today who would say, well, you know what? I just can't make a decision for Christ because I don't understand this whole business of the new birth, regeneration, salvation. But you know, the truth is, and, and you know, the, the list goes on. Uh, the virgin birth, the divinity of Christ, his miracles, the cross, the resurrection. I, I don't get all of it. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. The truth is, that's just not really the real truth most of the time. You see, the difficulties in the way a, a person is, is looking for reasons not to trust Christ are really... Uh, rarely, are really rarely these in, these issues. You see, Jesus doesn't ask people to 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 simply, you know, be able to fully, uh, completely know every jot and tittle of the Bible. Aren't
aren't you glad? <laughs> I mean, from Genesis to Revelation, I, we read some passages this, this morning in Sunday school that I can tell you are pretty obscure for a lot of people when it comes to, for example, the building of the, the temple, of Sol Solomon's temple. And uh, there's a whole lot to be learned there, a lot to do. And so it can't be that you have to fully appreciate and understand everything that there is in the Bible. It's really, it's really just about what we were talking about a moment ago. It's about trusting Christ as Savior and knowing that you've got to place your faith in Him. I can tell you this, that I am glad this evening that you don't have to be intellectually more advanced than someone else to trust Christ as Savior. What you have to do is have childlike faith. You've got to come to the Lord with childlike faith. Now, I can tell you that that probably does create a little bit of a problem for some. The truth is, though, they use it as an excuse. Well, I just can't believe that it's as simple as simply praying a prayer. Well, it's not as simple as simply praying a prayer. It's as simple as fully trusting the Lord and knowing that when you place your trust in Him, that you now are letting go of self and letting God be on the throne. I love what Job says, Job 13, 14. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. What a verse. What a verse. Think about that. I mean, uh, you know, it, all through the scriptures we see this. We see an attitude of full commitment to the Lord. And if the Lord should decide to just completely uh, turn his back on us, we will fully trust him and so be committed to him that whatever he does, he has every right to do. I mean, think about what Job is saying. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Kind of reminds me of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yep, yep. You know, first of all, I just like to say that, don't you? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even though those are not the Jewish names, we see that that. That a commitment to, in the whole story, we see uh, a, a commitment to trust the Lord fully. And even, even if uh, uh, one should perish in this, in, this, in this fire, I am going to trust the Lord. Do we understand what, what we're really saying? We're saying that it's not about, it's not about outcome. It's not about... Uh, results. It's not about okay. I, I'm I'm going to enjoy this or that. It's about just saying I place my confidence and trust in Jesus Christ. I am fully looking to Him, and that's it. That's all there is to it. That's it. Said and done. Though He slay me, even if the Lord allows for everything bad to happen that can happen to me to happen, yet will I trust Him. You see, when we get to a place. When we even get near that place, God can do big things. No doubt about it. I've seen it happen over and over and over again in ministry. You know, for some of us who have been involved in, in preaching and teaching and, and involved in ministry for a number of years, uh, some of us have come to the conclusion that, you know what, maybe it's true. Maybe uh, we won't have the largest church in America. Maybe it's, it's true that we will not see, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands saved on some national, you know, Christian radio program or television program or something. But you know what? I can tell you something. When a person gets to a place where they say, I'm just going to serve God and I'm going to trust him and I'm going to look to him and, and I'm going to be thankful that I get the opportunity just to preach and to teach or, or whatever ministry the Lord might have for me. That, that's, a, that's a very important place to be. I still, when I think back uh, years ago and I had the opportunity to preach for the very first time in and, and, and rescue missions and convalescent homes and, and uh, out in little bitty churches along the Salton Sea in Southern California, I used to go home and weep and be so thankful that I had the privilege Amen. to do this. i got to tell you something. What happens to us when we get beyond that? What happens to us when we think we deserve more? There ought to be more. We ought to receive more accolades and attaboys. I'll tell you what. What we need to be able to get back to is, though he may slay me, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Wherever he may put me. I was, i got to tell you.
tell you something. I want to see the, uh, the fifth video. We didn't get a chance to show that in Vacation Bible School. But I was moved by these missionaries. These missionaries who are on the back side of the planet. Uh, we had one missionary way up in Alaska, way, way, way away from everybody. And, uh, and, and by the way, they, they showed a box of Cheez-Its up there in Alaska. How much were those Cheez-Its? Like $15 for a box? Now, you know, I like Cheez-Its. But that's a lot of money. And here, here... Here are these, this family, this, this, this man called of God, his wife and his children out on the back side of the planet saying, you know what, no matter what happens, I will trust in him. I will trust in him because there are people here that need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. I thought, what did they, what this, I, I, I forget who I mentioned this to, but this uh, we saw, uh, when we saw this video, we, we saw the most extreme of conditions. Here was somebody in Alaska where, by the way, it's very cold. I don't know, you guys don't even know what that means, but actually if you leave the valley and you go north, it gets colder. I mean, you know, like when you get to Falfurius, <laughs> and if you go a little bit farther, it gets a little bit colder. You know what? I'm amazed at how often it can be even 10, 15, 20 degrees cooler in, are you ready? Uh, uh, in San Antonio than it is here. So by the time you get to Dallas, you think you're in Alaska, don't you? But you know what? We don't know what cold is. When we think of the extreme conditions uh, that these missionaries live in, it's amazing. And, and the complete, uh, it, 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 uh, I mean, that's one extreme. Some of us were able to visit with a missionary who for the last 14 years is, is living the other extreme. Where the temperatures are anywhere from 100 to 115 degrees, where one minute it's, it's, it's sunny and bright, the next moment the clouds come rolling in and flash floods hit during the monsoon and, and huge dust storms uh, come uh, both, uh, you know, come through. I'm telling you, there has to be times when Pastor Yazi must say, though he may slay me, That's right. yet will I trust the Lord. That's right. Will I trust him during those tough times? My, think about that. Quickly, quickly, thirdly, are you hiding from God in your church activity? Are you hiding from God in your church activities? Can I tell you, first and foremost, I'll tell you, it's better to serve with the wrong heart than it is not to serve at all. Now, some would say, look, if your heart's not right, you should not uh, to serve. You know, like, keep on serving and keep on praying and keep on seeking and keep on saying, Lord, grab a hold of my heart. Return to me the joy of my salvation. That's what I need, Lord. That's what I need. That's a good plan. That's a better plan Amen. than not serving at all. Right. And the reason why I say that is, is Satan will come alongside and say, you know what? Your heart isn't 100% right. And so you might as well just not uh, show up on Sunday night. Or you might as well dial back in this ministry Amen. or that ministry. And, you know, uh, it's okay because, you know, your heart wasn't right anyway. I can remember, and I know that Will Ashley remembers this situation, and this was a few years ago. Please don't try to figure out. Uh, anything other than this, we had someone say to us, you know what, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. My heart's not right, so I won't be here tonight. My friend, you show up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you, you dare the Lord to do something to your heart. And watch what will happen. Amen. You know, and I know, that also, we can hide from the Lord right smack dab in the middle of church activity. As a matter of fact, that's a miserable place. It really is. Because when you're doing ministry in the flesh, you hate it. Mm 